in order to run um, the Raspbian operating system on your desktop or experiment with Raspbian uh, as an OS without actually using Raspberry Pi, there's a number of ways. The way here is for you to install uh, VMware Workstation Player. Uh, now this is available on the VMware uh, website. It's uh, if you are using it for non-commercial purposes, uh, it is free of cost for you to download and install. Uh, the second thing that we need for this uh, exercise is to download um, the Raspberry Pi desktop. So uh, when you Google search for download Raspberry Pi desktop, it'll take you to uh, the first link will take you to the Buster uh, image for desktop. Now this is not to be confused with the ISO that you used in the Raspberry Pi. So when you download the ISO, it's going to download a file. Uh, it's a three gigabyte file, uh, but it should be um, uh, the ISO that is used to install um, a Linux or Raspbian operating system for your desktop computer. So um, I'm going to download this and then we're going to continue from there. All right, so the download is complete. Now this is a almost a three gigabyte file. Uh, and in order for, you, for us to use it, we're going to open up a, the VMware Workstation player. Uh, we're going to create a new virtual machine. So when I create it, it's going to say, okay, where is the ISO? Um, in my case, it's a I, it, it's an image. So I'm going to point it to my uh, downloads folder. Um, Raspbian desktop folder where I've actually saved this and the file. So this may vary for you. It'll be in your downloads folder. I just downloaded it to D drive and I just click on next. There's not a lot to change. Uh, there's no op. It's the operating system. Uh, uh, Raspbian is based on Debian. So Ubuntu 64 uh, Linux it should be okay here. Click on next. We're just going to rename it Ras uh, Raspberry Pi. And it's gonna. I'm just gonna save it in the default location. Click on next size. Um, you can give it 60, 16 gigabytes, or it'll only occupy the space once it needs it. So it's split into virtual uh, files, and it'll grow over time. So once you install stuff, it's gonna the file system is gonna grow. So you make sure that you have uh, at least 20 gigabytes of space available. Um, we don't need to configure anything else. Uh, if you can configure hardware, you can set to set the RAM to a different amount. Um, I've set it by default. It set it to two gigabytes, which should be enough. And I just click finish. Uh, once I do this, uh, it shows me that I'm ready. And so, play virtual machine will start the virtual machine. Uh, it's going to start a small box, uh, and I, I need to click in. So I'm just going to go down, down, down into install before it actually um, runs with persistence. So click on install. Uh, you can uh, get away with uh, using um, the, um, run with uh, with persistence, but I recommend that you install. So we're going to go up and select American English as language. Uh, click enter, uh, press enter, and it'll go into the next menu. Uh, it'll retrieve what it needs to. Uh, VMware automatically configures the Wi-Fi and the connectivity, so you don't need to do a lot of these things manually. Okay, so we're gonna select the use entire disk and guided method, so press return. Uh, press return, there's not a lot of options. Uh, return, uh, finish partitioning, uh, save changes to disk, left arrow, and then yes. Uh, it's going to take a couple of seconds to partition uh, the files and use it as a file system. Uh, so um, all Linux uh, installations would typically do this um, depending upon the kind of hard drive you have. So if you have a solid state drive, this will be uh, slightly faster. It'll copy the data from the ISO file from one drive to the other. So the uh, it's basically copying the Linux file system at this point of time. Uh, if you're using a mechanical drive or a slightly older laptop, uh, this process can take up to uh, 20 minutes. So um, uh, wait for the installation to complete. It's going to copy some stuff and then it's going to present us with a new an another menu. I'm going to pause the video here and I will resume uh, once the uh, copying process is complete.
All right, so the install seems to be complete. Uh, it's gonna say install Grub Bootloader, yes or no. Uh, I wanna mention one more thing. If uh, once you click this, uh, your mouse will kind of just disappear in order for you to get your mouse back. Uh, uh, con control and alt buttons pressed at the same time will re release your mouse so if I want to go back I just click back again and it's in the virtual machine so it attaches your mouse to that virtual machine for that duration in, in order for you to release it from that um, you need to press control and alt there once we install tools it'll allow you to do that um, uh, seamlessly so I'm gonna say install the master boot record say yes uh, select dev slash SDA 1 which is the primary drive um, a couple of seconds into it it's gonna install uh, the bootloader which is gonna be the boot screen that asks you uh, what operating system it needs to boot um, uh, this is redundant we don't need to but um, probably there's a an alternate way to it but this is the default way uh, next installation is complete. Uh, is it time to boot into your new system? Say continue and uh, it's going to remove extra files or whatever and it's going to try to finish the installation. Um, a couple of seconds in, again, uh, this booting process and everything kind of depends on the, uh, not only on the PC configuration, the amount of RAM that you have available, but also on the type of hard drive you have. So if it's a mechanical drive, maybe slightly uh, slower for you guys. Uh, so wait for it to finish. Uh, I'm, I think I'm, this one is being installed on an SSD. So this is um, a solid state drive. Okay, so it's going to present you with a menu, click on enter, uh, press enter and it'll uh, help you install, uh, open up the Raspbian desktop uh, and boot it. Um, it's going to set up things. Uh, you can press escape and look at the messages and say, oh yes, next. So this is very similar to what you would see on a freshly installed Raspbian Raspberry Pi. I click on next, it's going to say country, I'm in uh, the good country of Canada. So. Uh, Canada, Canadian English, just make sure that you click on US uh, keyboard. Uh, click on next, it's gonna set location, password, I just set a four character because it's a virtual machine, I don't expect it to update software, just skip on that right now. Click on restart, restart. it's gonna generate some locales and um, some other configurations, so it shouldn't take a lot of time. Um, restart. Uh, shows you the boot screen and there we go now at this point uh, when you resize it won't allow you to uh, resize the window so that's a problem in order for us to be able to uh, use that uh, i want to open up a terminal uh, run the command sudo apt update uh, mind that this commands will be in the youtube video uh, description so update and then sudo apt install uh, open uh, vm dash vm dash tools. Oops, typo. And it's going to ask you, do you want me to install? Uh, yes, return, and then it'll install, which should be. Uh, so these are the tools that will allow us to seamlessly go transition between uh, this. Uh, OS. So now, can I? Oh, there we go. So now I can successfully resize the window. I can make it full screen if I'd like to. Um, make it consume a little more screen, and there we go. Uh, I can now do other stuff like sudo apt upgrade, and it'll um, tell me that I need to download a uh, 107 megabytes of uh, stuff, and I don't need to do that. Uh, I can also install. Uh, apt install uh, Maria DB server and it's gonna say yes I can allow you to do that uh, again um, you can basically now um, do all the stuff other than interface with the hardware uh, on your desktop that you you originally were doing with the on the laptop some software may be slightly different because this is an x86 system uh, you name um, SA, and it tells me that this is actually a running on an a AMD 64 x 664 architecture slightly different the user interface is basically the same uh, it 
is the uh, it looks similar to what the Raspbian OS is. Uh, some of the installed software and features are going to be similar. Uh, the menus are going to be same, uh, same uh, in terms of the um, user interface. Uh, beyond that, the back and the kernel and everything is different. So slight differences, but uh, pretty useful if you have if you have the Raspberry Pi edge and you don't want to connect a uh, display to your Raspberry Pi and get it started with it. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope this video has been useful. Like and subscribe. Uh, leave me comments uh, in the comment section. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.